Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to DannyHendrickson.com. I'm Dan Hendrickson, author. And remember, the fun is in the journey. Hey, we're here meeting with Troy Miller. Now, Troy Miller hails from Colorado, and he's been practicing martial arts since the early 1980s. He and I met while being students at Bill Shaw Kung Fu and Karate back in Casper, Wyoming in 1982. Troy was about four belts ahead of me when I joined that school. Since that time, he has studied over 24 different forms of martial arts and has been an instructor for over 35 years. He has black belt or instructor status in all of them. And here are some of them. Han Fu Wa, Fighting Arts, USA Boxing, Muay Thai, Savate, Jiu-Jitsu, Jun Fan Kung Fu, Lamesco Escrima, FBI Baton, FBI Defense Tactics, Ask Baton, and Cali, and he's more. He's been in several competitive competitions with quite a few championships under his belt, which include Cold Steel Challenge, Weapons Challenge, in categories of sword, knife, spear, and hand-to-hand -hand fighting. He's also been a movie stunt choreographer and stunt coordinator working with Hollywood personalities like Steven Seagal, Lance Hendrickson, and Aaron Eckhart. Some of the movies he has worked on is Sinner and Saints, Daylight Ends, End of the Gun, I, Frankenstein, and Code of Honor. At present, he resides in Grand Junction, Colorado, and is the owner-operator of a long-standing karate studio called Martial Art Resource Systems. I did say that right, didn't I? Research. Research Systems, yeah. Studio mm -hmm. with over 400 students. Troy, why don't you say hi to people? Hello, how's everybody doing out there? All right. <laughs> you well, like I said, Troy and I go way back. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're, 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 we're the same age, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, 1962. And yeah. Uh, Troy was one of the uh, original students, I think, of Bill Shaw in Casper. Yeah. He started out with him, and he was one of the first ones in that studio to gain his black belt. And like I said in the introduction, he has gone way beyond that and accomplished quite a bit in his life. He's uh, one of the great success stories in that first uh, group of people that got to study with Sifu Shah. Now, Troy, I see that you started your first studio back in 1987. You're, yeah. you're a pretty young guy back then. Pretty young. Um, yeah. <laughs> so can you explain how that happened and, and what, what you did there? Well, um... I worked construction, so the whole time I was training in Wyoming, if they'd move me around, and I, you know, whenever I went somewhere, I'd train at a martial arts school. Well, they moved me down here, and I was supposed to be here for four years, um, and I had young kids at the time, and I was going to uh, karate school here, but I was competing at the time, uh, you know, Sipu competed, so all of us were competing at the right. time, and the school I was going to just didn't do enough sparring. So I, I called Bill Shaw and he said, open a school. So, <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so I opened a school just to get training partners. And then a bunch of the black belts in town came and trained with me. I got a lot of police officers, you know, and uh, yeah, so, you know, worked during the day and had school in the evening. So, yeah. Okay. What was your biggest obstacle in getting started? Uh, not thinking you're qualified. Not thinking you're qualified. Yeah, I still feel that today sometimes. I feel like, you know, I'm not, I shouldn't be doing what I'm doing. You know, I Just think we all... your training that you pursued over the years. Yeah, I know. That's why. I keep... <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I think not, you know, even like what Sifu said, you should be teaching. Well, well, no, I'm not qualified. <laughs> but I think that's the biggest obstacle, you know. And yeah. back then it was so much easier, though. I mean, my lease was 300 bucks a month. Oh. You know, and that same spot I went and looked would rent now for fifteen hundred. So isn't that amazing? Yeah. So back then I did ten people paying me thirty bucks. It was relatively, you know, not scary. <laughs> you know, yeah. So nineteen eighty seven, nineteen eighty nine. What? When did you feel was the real breaking point where you broke into the business and became an established school? Um, I mean, that is a very hard to answer. Yeah. Because, you know, I don't know. I mean, when I, when I, I've always had mentors, different mentors. I've had business mentors 
just like martial arts mentors. Mm -hmm. So there's been organizations like um, NAPA, which was the National Something Martial Arts. Now it's Maya Martial Arts Industry Association. So I belong part of that. But like when I started a good school, you know, 200 was a good school, you yeah. know, but then the amount of money they were bringing in was 20, 30,000. Now schools are bringing in 200, 300,000 a month. Yeah, and I'm not, but but I'm in a small town. So for the size of Grand Junction, I'm relatively successful. So, you know, I, I mean, I really don't know. I mean, it's just, I just, I just did it. You know, I went through a divorce. Um, she took off and she left two kids. I adopted them and raised her kids. So, I mean, I was busy. So I, I really don't know when I thought I made it, you know, <laughs> I, just, I just did it. Just working on paying the bills, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, just did it. I mean, I did construction a day, this at night. And then uh, I think a year into it, because the construction company told me I'd be here four years. Then they said, you got to move to Rapid City, South Dakota. And I went, no, I quit. <laughs> <laughs> so I started my own construction company and then martial arts school. But in a year's time, I had 100 students, you know, wow. and then I had to make a decision. Do I want to do construction or do I want to do martial arts? And martial arts was just a lot more fun. My, now, if you talk to my mother, I didn't make it until I did a movie. The whole time I had the martial arts school because she'd moved to Vegas. Come to Vegas. I can get you a job here, security. Yeah. I did my first movie. I really didn't get paid anything. And then my mom is, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She so, had bragging rights. <laughs> yeah. So no more. No more. You got to get a real job. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah so you I understand that your um your studio is not only a, a martial arts studio but it's also a fitness center and do you feel like those two businesses complement one another and help feed each other uh yeah and so the, the way it happened is uh my wife's a competitive bodybuilder okay. and she's been fitness she's got multiple black belts just like me but we had the kids' classes going, and she grabbed a bunch of the mothers off to the side, a little section, and started a fitness kickboxing. Nice. And that, it, it, right, you know, the kids were going, and they'd have a little corner on the floor doing fitness kickboxing. Well, I came in one day, and she'd signed a lease. We're in Unit 1. She signed a lease on Unit 7 to start a fitness kickboxing facility. So, and then from there, she because she's competitive bodybuilder she bought a bunch of weights and moved her trainer her trainer manages it now so you know at the time we had two now we just bought a building so now we're in one building so we bought the building we bought it in january we put a glass wall up so one side is all martial arts then we got a glass wall with glass garage doors so we can throw it open then there's a another workout floor that we do a lot of kickboxing classes on and then a an area that's full of weights so yeah, total accident. She, I came in, she goes, you're signing this. I said, what if I don't want to? <laughs> she didn't care. But the beauty of it is uh, the parents train. So with it, we had it at the same time. So uh -huh. if there was a kids class, the parents would sit and watch the kids for about, you know, three months. And then we would talk to them, hey, come down, try a kickboxing class. So they would be training at the same time. So, and we found if I can get families training, I can keep them, you know, to black belt and longer. So getting the because the kid's going to want to quit but if mom's going no i'm going to go meet my friends <laughs> I drop you off and i'm going to train so yeah I, I think it's really helped the school so, I, I think you just answered my third question yeah the breaking point because that 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 makes sense to me because you 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 use the kids to help the the parents get involved i think that's pretty clever and you know um I know because I've, I've, I've done a, a martial arts school myself and it's hard to keep them going. Most yeah. don't last that long. And yeah. you've been around what, 35 years now? Yeah. Almost 40 years. That that's incredible. That that's a, that's a, a huge accomplishment. Oh, thank you. Many martial artists. Um, what do you feel like on both sides? Do you have any like success stories you'd like to share with us? Uh, like either in the fitness categories or a martial arts student or group that you've had? Um, you know, martial arts, Bill Shaw made us competitors because he was competing. Mm -hmm. So we competed and traveled. Stan and all of us, we competed. I kept competing. And I went from, the, you know, the point circuit, point karate, with, to full contact, to full contact stick fighting. So, I mean, within that realm, I won 
you know, I've got a few world titles, but I'm the only ones truly a world title that was actually teams from all over the world. And that was uh, the stick fighting in 96. I won the world for, uh, stick fighting championships. Wow. And so, and how I won that's kind of cool. So I didn't have a black belt in, in any of the Filipino martial arts at the time, um, but I was training in them and they had their tournament circuit. So I'd put on the gear and go fight, but I didn't know any of the forms and stuff. So when I won, so I went, the, the coach was in New Jersey. So I was flying out to New Jersey to train. But uh, when I went to the Worlds and the Worlds that year were in LA. So I, um, I fought in the Worlds twice. I fought in Canada too. But in LA, I, I got kicked off the team. They, they, I was on the team politics. Uh -huh. But the day before the Worlds, they had a tournament. If you won that tournament, you could walk on. So I fought in that tournament and won it and got a walk on. And, uh, and then I went on to win that one. So, you know, that, that was fun. Tournaments for me were never about winning. It was more about, I didn't want to be a big fish in a small pond. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, it'd be easy. So, I mean, it was to go to see where I was and, and stuff like that. So, and the cold steel challenge stuff was just a lot of fun. Weapon sparring is just a lot of fun. I so in the knife. Must be interesting to compete against all that different talent too. Yeah, and, and it's a lot of fun. And the weapons is very similar to the point fighting, so it was real easy to take the stuff we learned from Bill Shaw. So Bill Shaw was very much about attributes, mm -hmm. um, and most of the Jeet Kune Do schools are. So you know, uh, speed, power, distance, timing, um, which goes across all sports. Um, what I hate to see is I see people that had, like trained with with Sifu, but then went on to like Thai boxing and totally forgot the stuff he taught, mm -hmm. you know, still works within that realm. You know, it's not, you know, so, you know, I really, a lot of the stuff is like non-telegraphing, that non-telegraphing back fist up and down, one knee cold steel challenge, getting off the line and hitting him with a knife, you know, or a sword, mm -hmm. you know, so that all, all that stuff from the beginning transfers over. As sure. I went, and I, I truly believe that made me a good fighter, even in the full contact realm, because I could play that longer game. I could hit them at the longer range, get in and move out, do the combinations inside and move out. So, but yeah, I mean, I won that. I won a national jujitsu championship. But at the time, that's when jujitsu was getting real popular, the Gracies and stuff. Mm -hmm. So there was a big tournament in Denver and they called it a national. I mean, I don't know if it was, but the uh, Olympic judo people were there yeah and uh, when i and that was just me me going and i took my students to see where we were and you know i ended up fighting the coach of the olympic team and uh one had to find him twice wow yeah so that that was that was that was cool because that was cool because all the karate people were there rooting for me so yeah. you had all the judo people <laughs> and all the karate people that knew me in colorado and stuff were there rooting so that was really that was really cool Nice. Uh, yeah fitness um, me that's my wife you know I, I train I lift weights but not like my wife my wife's you know mm -hmm. traveled the world you know so we went to Greece she goes all over I hopefully she's retired but I don't know <laughs> she's talking about competing again I like food <laughs> yeah well, I do I do have a friend that lives out there in Colorado that does go to your fitness studio um, yeah. and her name is Patty Dieters and she has nothing but great things to say about your your whole organization um, how she gotten in shape and got her got her just so many great benefits from working out at your place and I don't know if she's a karate student but I know she goes there to for fitness she was doing the fitness she was doing yeah. fitness and the, the kickboxing yeah. classes so the kickboxing classes they're learning the punching and kicking but I don't have a belt rank right it's just high reps of punching and kicking the heavy bag and they'll win the mats, but they don't ever have to get punched in the face. Well, I like, I like how you use the karate to kind of, that's kind of a cool idea. I've never heard of that where you get the kid, you get the kid's parents involved on yeah. the other side. And yeah, that's pretty was, neat. All my wife. She <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? There are better halves. That's why. Yeah. So lots of different martial arts backgrounds. Um, and I know you've had to like focus, any school has to focus on a, on a, a something. What is your favorite? What do you, what do you kind of tend towards in your teaching and in your own personal practice? Um, well, we start with a punching base. So a lot of boxing, I mean, a lot of boxing and judo at the mm -hmm. beginning, you know, I want them to be able to, you know, defend themselves hands up. And then we build on from there, but not a lot on the ground. We do have separate jujitsu classes, but yeah. 
you know, I don't want to roll around on, you know, on concrete if we have to fend ourselves. So, I mean, most of it is, I mean, it sounds like a lot, but a lot of it is, you know, like Bill Shaw was a Bruce Lee based art. I mean, his yeah. own flavor to it. Cause Steve Golden trained with Bruce Lee. Right. Um, so Steve Golden taught, uh, Bruce Lee taught Steve Golden, Steve Golden taught Bill Shaw, Bill Shaw taught me. Then I've got Richard Bastello, Richard Bastello, Bruce Lee taught Richard Bastello, Richard Bastello taught me, Dan Inasano, that same lineage. And they all have a little different flavor to them. Mm -hmm. So, And they all have different names, like Han Fu Wa um, could really easily have been Jeet Kune Do. Mm -hmm. And when did you train with them, you know? And like Richard Bastello called his IMB, International Martial Arts and Bogdan. But... And when did you train with Bruce? Because Bruce Lee's style, Jeet Kune Do was later. And, you know, it was um, Jun Fan Gung Fu, which is just Bruce Lee's name in can Cantonese. And that is a true style. That is written down what you learn. Uh -huh. that, that is a true style. Jeet Kune Do was really not a true style. It was more about the attributes. And that's where you get the differences. And like with Bill Shaw bringing in his judo, you know, and... So they all have their own little flavor in it. Yeah. And Savat, Savat was perfect for me because the point fighting, you know, lead leg forward, fast kicks, didn't work in Muay Thai. Yeah. And, until I took Savat. And then my Savat, and Savat is French. It's actually French martial arts, but it's kickboxing with a shoe. And a gentleman named Nikolai was my instructor. And he uh, brought out where I could do my kicks from karate because the range is different, but he got me bouncing and moving and picking angles. So... You know, so my curriculum, I mean, is basic. It's not, you know, and, and we've got as young as three and my oldest is in the eighties. So, wow. Yeah. So as the longer with me, they start learning more of the sticks like we did. Um, you know, Bill Shaw really didn't teach us a lot of sticks. We learned some Brada and Hubud. And then I, I really dove into the weapon stuff, but I save that for when they're higher. Okay. It's gotta Good. be basic. Cause if they have to defend themselves, right. You know, you can't have too much. Well, I, I came into Bill Shaw's from a boxing background. And, you know, when I first got there, I, I knew nothing about kicking. Yeah. And you guys were all good kickers. I'm, you were an excellent kicker. I remember. I remember you very clearly. You used to have that long blonde hair, yeah. that young guy. And yeah. you yeah. were good at kicking. And I don't know what um, happened to him. It was, it, was a little, it was a little intimidating, some of you guys, to, to spar with you and Stan. But uh, I did okay because of my boxing. Yeah. But when you guys got up to your brown belts, um, brown belts, high brown belts, Sifu started teaching you Wing Chun. Yeah. And then you started tying me up. Yeah. And that really got me excited because I couldn't wait to get up to my brown belt when he started teaching me Wing Chun. And I, I made it to, I barely made it to high brown belt before I moved on. And, you know, in Sifu's system, that was a high brown belt, then red belt, high red, then black. So. Yeah. That's as far as I made it with him. But I did get a little bit of Wing Chun. But it was really interesting to see that. And I, 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 I saw a video of you, I think, on YouTube. You were working a Wing Chun dummy in mm -hmm. your studio there. And that was really cool to watch you do that because you were really fast. And so that yeah. Wing Chun must be a big part of your Yeah. Um, well, it does beat boxing. And there's a, well, there's a range. Mm -hmm. Boxing beats Wing Chun at a certain range. So if you can dominate a range, you know, so Wing Chun is, is, there's a range that Wing Chun beats boxing. Okay. But boxing is not used to that range. And I don't think boxing realizes that range. So like the, when Bruce Lee taught, a lot of the trapping because of karate had big blocks. Yes. So it really set up the trapping. And that's where a lot of Bruce Lee's lead leg forward. So he, when he fought people, he would have his right foot forward. The majority of styles out there had left leg forward. It created more space, gave you time to do the trapping from Wing Chun. So that was one of the big reasons, Bruce Lee, not only lead legs closer and faster, it really makes trapping easier. It really, really yeah. does. But now everybody, even karate doesn't do these blocks. They tap. Right, so right. That, that's changed trapping a lot. You have to, you almost have to double now and get in. So, you know, where Bruce, the big, the big blocks were coming in and trapping was a lot easier you know in the 80s then in the 90s now everybody's all, all the martial arts have boxing or muay thai in, uh, some yeah. influence of it you know you they know. just started to answer my next question because i thought i was going to ask you what is the difference between teaching in the 80s and teaching now um 
well, in the 80s, I had all, all adults. Now I have a lot of children and family. Yeah. You know, I was a competitive school. We, we traveled, we competed. Um, I, I miss that. And when I was traveling, a bu- when I was competing, a bunch of people went with me. But, you know, I wasn't seeing my family in weekends. I was gone on weekends. So when yeah. I quit, nobody picked up the mantle and, and went. It's really weird. If I decide I'm going to go compete, a bunch will go, but they don't go on their own. So, um, and at the big difference, like in the 80s, we were all like the Kung Fu movies. We wanted the master, the that mysticism yeah. and stuff like that, which I still like today. And, and it's coming back. You're starting to see, you know, the karate kids coming back and that stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But there for a while, it was all MMA, which is more of a thud. I, I love... Um, MMA. Um, I came up shoot wrestling, but when I was sh- shoot wrestling was before the UFC. But when I was shoot wrestling, it was all high level people. So when we were competing, it was people that had already had black belts and were, you know, really champions in their own style coming in to see how they could do with this blend of punching, kicking, and grappling. Now they're fighting in three months, you know? Yeah. And the attitude there's no yes sirs, there's no no sirs, which I don't like um kids i had to teach them how to kick in the 80s now they come in with an idea how to kick you know in the 80s I, well this is a round kick and now it's they've seen it it's on every cartoon on every they're right. doing they're trying to do the fancy spin stuff um but i think one of the bad things is the kids coming in now are a lot heavier you know when you came in for your first lesson i always do a one-on-one i'd have them do 10 push-ups i have kids now that can't do three push-ups so we, wow. you know, yeah. So, you know, they're, they're the not outside. Physical, the, the whole physical fitness thing has to come into play with your teaching. Yeah. Yeah. They're not outside playing anymore. So, yeah. But Too much video games. Yeah. And it's cool. It's coming back around. I mean, I'm seeing yeah. stuff from me just come back around. Now they're coming in and wanting to learn, you know, they're, they're not wanting to fight. They're wanting that. Right. The philosophies, the advantages, you know, the discipline, and all that now like you know they want the kung fu master again <laughs> well that's good that's good because then uh, maybe you'll get back to some of those sirs and no sir i remember that it was it was we like always, being in the military i guess always, yeah ours guys always say yes sir no sir and we will never take that out we yeah i don't care what i don't care what happens you know we will always have yes sir no sir yes ma'am no ma'am yeah you know one of the things that i saw um as i've been looking at well, when I talked to Bill Shaw a couple of weeks ago and uh, talked about this whole stunt and choreography stuff in the movies, you know, guys like you, I can see how valuable you would be to um, making a movie and putting together different scenes because you already know how to fight and, you know, you can do the moves and stuff and, and uh, it's really cool. Um, you know, you got involved with the stunt work pretty early. And well, how did you get involved with that? Because I mean, did, did you know people in karate or martial arts that helped you? Or did you meet somebody from Hollywood? Or how did that happen? Um, well, I met a gentleman named Ron Baliki. Um, and w- at the time when I met him, he was helping at a shoot wrestling camp I was at. Okay. And uh, I started training with him. So and he met and he was a full instructor under Dan Inasano. Who I've always wanted to train with, you know. Um, then he ended up marrying Dan Inasano's daughter, and she's actually on Star Wars, The Mandalorian. She's the magistrate. Oh, wow. So those two were in the stunt work, and they gave me a call. Do you want to? I was filming a instructional DVD for him. And he said, "Hey, you want to go to New Orleans and be in a movie?" And then <laughs> you know, at the time, not a lot of money. It was not SAG. Yeah. Um, you know, SAG is the the union. Right. Um, right. So I did a, I do a, did a few of those and then did uh, Draken. Now, Draken was, um, I believe it was Sony, gave a bunch of graphic artists so much money to make a short. And whoever won that movie was going to get made. But that got my SAG card. SAG is really weird. You can't get your SAG card unless you're working, but you can't work unless you don't. So right. it, it's not like you can just do it. So once I got my SAG card that opened up and then Ron was supposed to go do a movie for Steven Seagal and he couldn't. So I got, I was able to go do that one. And then I've done two movies with Steven, one in Salt Lake and one in Romania. 
the one in Romania, Ron was supposed to go, but he had health issues. He actually had a, a tumor in his heart they had to take out. Um, he's fine, but so he couldn't go. He goes, Troy, I need you to go. I'm going, I ain't going. You're going to open heart surgery. <laughs> so, but yeah, he ended up fine. And so now Steven's in Russia, I think. <laughs> Making more movies, still making movies. Wow. Uh, you know, he was. I don't think he is anymore. Uh, okay. Yeah, he's he's an interesting person. He was, you know, he's definitely an interesting person. Did you ever get to do anything personally with him, martial arts wise? Do anything uh, yeah, he actually uh, got, to, we went to his house to teach him sticks um, for a movie that was supposed to happen in China and never happened. But while we're there, he taught us whatever style of Aikido he was, they have a knife system. So, mm -hmm. I, you know, I got to train in his knife system. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah that must have been. That must have been uh, pretty interesting to uh, work with people like that. I know that um, you had some other men there, Lance Hendrickson and um, Lance, Clark. Lance was phenomenal. Yeah. Lance's work ethic was amazing. I remember him from Aliens and stuff. He wouldn't go hang out with the actors like the stunt guys all have our little room. When he wasn't on screen, he was hanging out with us. But it is over, you know, we, there's two hotels. Some people stay in this hotel. The actors stay in the Ritz. <laughs> invite us over. He was great. Um, Aaron Eckhart, I got to just train him. So um, I almost got a stunt double in, but they ended up filming it in Australia, and I couldn't go. They had to hire an Australian. But I got to go out and help Ron and Diana train him for I Frankenstein. So that was really, really cool because the stuff we worked on was actually in the movie. So when it came out, we took our, all our students and I taught what I taught them and it was in the movie. So they were seeing the running sets with the swords and the sticks. So it was really cool to see, you know, a lot of times you don't see it. It's just, they cut it and it goes from there. And then the stunt coordinating, I actually got to stunt coordinate Washington's armor. So Washington armor is a group, the Chosen, if you haven't seen Chosen, it's about Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's a Christian group, and they make, um, you know, more more Christian, upbeat films. Right. So I got to go do um, that one. Then they're going to make two more of those. So that was fun. That was a lot of tomahawk fighting, bayonet fighting. It's about a young George Washington and the French Indian War. So it was a lot of, it was a lot of fun. I was out there for a month putting that together. So you're still doing this? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. So let me ask you up to this point, we'll close out with this one. What is your most memorable experience in front of the camera? Daylight's end. I died a hundred times and killed a hundred times. So if you, if you watch Daylight's end, if it's a black person or a woman, it's not me. All the other ones are me. So <laughs> I, I would die. They'd run, put me back in makeup, put different clothes on me, send me back out. So, and that, you know, it was funny because we were all sitting at dinner that, ni that night and we're in there. Well, I killed five people and the, the person serving his food drops it. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I went, no, not really. But um, yeah, I mean, the stunt works, that was fun. You know, that was where I really learned the craft on that, mm -hmm. on that one. I got squibbed so many times, killed so many times. I killed so many people. So I really learned the trade on that one. So bet your kids love this, don't they? Well, my son wants me to be a good guy. He goes, are you ever going to be a good guy? I said, you <laughs> <in this case?" laughs> Yeah. I did. And Steven Seagal, I did, because Steven was the bad guy, and I stunt doubled okay. the good guy. But you don't see me. If you see if you see Steven and you see the back of the head, the back of the head is me. <laughs> okay. You guys are about the same height, right? No, Steven's tall. Is he taller than you? Big, okay. He's big. Yeah. He's, he's tall. He probably really tall. And, uh, I bet he's 300 and something pounds. He's a big boy. Okay. It was like, wrestling. Just, it was like wrestling a bear. <laughs> I just he remember was, you're, you're six foot at least, aren't you? Yeah, I'm six foot. Yeah, that's what I thought. I, I've shrunk. I'm 5'11 and three quarters or something. Yeah, well, I have two. <laughs> yeah. I'm three. Over the years. Yeah. Well, that's pretty neat. Um, you know, I, I've, I've endeavored to put what I've learned in my writing and in my stories, um, and I owe a lot to people like Bill Shaw and stuff, and, and I'm, it sounds like you do too, um, where we've learned to put it into our professions, and it's just neat hearing your experience, because 
you know, martial arts isn't just about going to tournaments. This isn't just about doing a studio. It's all everything we just talked about. So many different aspects that people can experience in their lives by getting involved with martial arts. And it's really a fun thing. And you can get a lot, you can learn a lot of life lessons from it yeah. too. I mean, a lot of yeah. discipline, a lot of different things. Here we have yeah. a man that's been in movies, taught schools, ran a successful business for 35 years. Pretty neat stuff, Troy. And yeah. uh, well, Certainly been great having you all here. Um, certainly great to have Troy here at dannyhendrickson.com. Let's uh, remember that the fun is in the journey. And if you get a chance, check out my newest books. They are Brandy, Ballad of a Pirate Princess, and The Living Legend. And they have lots of martial arts and lots of fight scenes in them. And certainly thankful for all of you joining us today. And tune in next time for our next one. And thank you very much, Troy. All right, thank you. All right. I'm going to have to make those books into a movie. I hope so someday. <laughs> I've stopped recording. <laughs> Here's that.